Hello everybody and welcome to the DirectX 11 tutorial 2. In this tutorial we are just going to cover some more setup things, um, but not in the project setup, in our code setup. So first we are going to make a string converter class. So let's go ahead and make a new header. We are going to call this string converter. Now we are going to need our string uh, header. Class is just going to have one public function for now. We might add more later. It's going to be a static function because this class will actually act as a singleton. We won't need to instantiate this class to use it as, as all it is is just a converter. There's no reason for us to instantiate it. The only function we are going to have for now is going to convert a string to a wide string. And this is because a lot of the DirectX API and Windows API expects wide strings. Next, let's make the CPP for this class. All right, and it's actually very easy to convert strings to wide strings. Wide string has a constructor where we can just take in the begin iterator and the end iterator for the string and it will construct the wide string and return that. Next, we need to make a class for logging our errors. Let's create a new header file. We're going to call this class error logger. Our error logger class will use our new string converter header that we made. We are going to have two types of uh, ways that we can log errors. Also keep in mind, this class will also act as a singleton. The first way that we will log errors, we'll just take in a string message. The second way though, you see it will take in something called an H result for the first argument and then a message for the second, just like how the first one did. H result is a data type that is passed by a lot of Windows API functions and DirectX API functions and it will tell us whether that the function call was successful. And if it was not successful, it will give us some type of error code related to the reason that it failed. In order to use H result, we are going to include the Windows header inside of this file. Next, let's make the CPP for error logger. And you see that I also have another header up here called comdef. Comdef will be used for our com error data type, and we will get to that in just a moment. First, let's look at the first log function that we've made. We will create a new error message that will just start with error, a colon, a space, and then our error message after it. And then we will create a message box. Now you see this is message box A. Message box A means a message box where the strings passed in are ASCII strings. These will be short strings. The first argument is our parent window, or a handle to the parent window. Our message boxes will not have a parent window, as I don't really see any reason that we should, so I'll just pass in null for that. The next is the text inside of the message box, so this will be the string that we just created. The third argument is to title, and we're just going to pass an error for our message box title. And the last argument is the message box type. We are going to do an error message box, so I thought it would be appropriate to just pass in the icon error message box. Now let's look at the next function, where we're passing in the h result. We're going to create a com error variable and the constructor for this takes an H result. Using this, we can retrieve information about that error by calling the error message function. Now you see we are using a wide string when we construct this error message. The reason is because the error message function that we call on com error will return a wide string. 
we are making this string by starting it with air the same way. And notice that these strings have L before them, and that's because they are wide strings. And then we are calling our string converter string to wide function to convert our message that we passed in. We are then adding a new line to go to the next line for our actual error message. And then we are appending the error message that we get from that com error object. And for the message box, you'll see that we are doing a message box with wide strings, and that's why it ends with W. And all of the other arguments are passed in the same as our previous message box. So if we go back to our source.cpp, let's remove where we are including Windows, since Windows is included in the air logger, and let's just include the air logger. One example of uh, an H result is SOK. Now this means it was successful and it ran OK. There was nothing, you know, to note about it. So let's just try calling uh, our air logger and passing that in. For our message, we will pass in test message. And if we run this, you see we get error test message because that's the message we passed in. And then we get information about that message. The operation completed successfully. So obviously you would never call error logger and pass in a, you know, a successful message. Um, but one example of a message you might get back is if you screw up your arguments or your arguments aren't set up right, you might get back invalid args. Or invalid arg. There we go. There's no s on the end. So if we had passed this in, for example, we would get the parameter is incorrect. So we would know that something was wrong with our parameters. Now, when you get back an H result, you can check whether it was successful or if it failed with some macros. So for example, let's say I have this H result. So I could say if it failed, then I would call my error logger. I'll just put failure for our message. And then if we run that, we should get the message box since that is a failure um, H result. However, let's say that we had SOK, which is a success, it's not a failure then we should get no message box when we run it this time. Okay, and the program ended, we did not get a message box. If instead you want to check if it's successful, there's also if succeeded. So if it was successful, pass in a message box, success. change that to ASCII. All right. All right, so that is all that we are going to cover for right now in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are probably going to go over uh, creating the basic engine class and creating our render window class, which will create the render window.